be happy to try and answer. As most of you know that, you know, these recordings can be found on YouTube, they can be found on Facebook. Uh, they're like very good references to what is being taught here, good reminders of what is being taught here. And I suggest people use them, you know, you can go and there's hundreds of them. I mean, there's four or 500 of them that have been posted on both YouTube and Facebook. Uh, does anyone have a question they would like to ask? I have a question, Stuart. Yes. <clears throat> um, it's to do with the, in sort of, with the heart and the feeling of pain. So the in a kind of habitual pattern to close the heart when something you know hurtful or painful is coming and how to it there's a oh sorry what i'm feeling is that that's all right it's clear it's clear to me what your question is okay, okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's... Uh, look the answer to that is very simple uh every time a difficult please everyone try and sit still please if you move you you know, fix your glasses. You, I mean, it just, it disrupts the whole energy. So try and just stay disciplined for another five or 10 minutes. I mean, it's not a long time. Uh, look, uh, when difficult situations arrive, emotional, mental, uh, all kinds of things that happen in the world, financial situations, and the heart closes and the pain we feel in the heart chakra is really that part of you that, you know, is trying to open inside and yet we don't have the inner strength yet to sustain the openness. I mean, God is love. The whole secret of a spiritual life is learning how to keep the heart open. This takes time. It takes maturity. It takes inner development. We have to have patience with ourselves because mostly people go through life, you know, uh, protecting themselves, keeping their hearts closed, building walls around themselves so they won't be hurt by life. It takes time to dissemble those walls. It takes time to build a chakra system that is strong enough so that one can live with Ananda, one can live with bliss, with love, no matter what is going on no matter what difficult situations manifest in our life. Look, I've been doing this for a very long time. I still have situations that manifest in my life that are very difficult. And under ordinary circumstances, they would really you know, twist, in, twist and tear me apart. But having the training, I have learned how to sustain an open heart and how to truly continue to build a chakra system that is strong enough to keep the heart open. So when you feel that pain, it's not a negative thing. It's just something telling you that you have work to do on yourself. You have to grow, you have to get stronger. You have to continue to build an inner life, you know, so that you arrive at a place where you can truly receive the energy of God, the Shakti, the higher force in the universe, and allow that to flow through your system and to build foundation, to build an open heart, to build a throat chakra that's open, to quiet the mind and develop an inner person that is strong enough to deal with all of the karma and all of the difficulties that we have to deal with in life. And those difficulties don't go away. You understand? There'll always be stuff like that in the world. What can happen is we build an inner life that's strong enough to where these difficulties don't close us up. This is really important. I mean, I've been talking a lot lately about this whole thing that spiritual energy, God, Shakti, higher energy, you know, is not positive or negative, it's just energy. That energy contains whatever exists in the universe. It's, you know, it's the genesis of all of life. It's the ohm sound. 
the sound of creative energy, which is the genesis of all that. We take that energy inside. And the real problem is not with the energy. It is how people are constituted inside themselves. People that are unhappy, they're miserable, they're victims, they're, you know, that energy, this purity transforms itself into whatever we are. And that is what we offer to the world. If we work on ourselves and we build a system inside that is strong enough to keep the heart open, strong enough to stay centered and balanced, to be able to master sexual energy and use it as an incredibly powerful force to activate Kundalini, you know, and if we're strong enough to be able to have Kundalini alive inside ourselves, as a conscious effort to reach God, you understand? Uh, that's what manifests in the world. Love, compassion, joy, happiness, sweetness, patience, forgiveness, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the pain you feel is not negative. It's telling you that you need to work on yourself. The thoughts you have, the conflicts you have, the people that manifest that are difficult for you are not negative. They're just telling you that you have to work on yourself, that you need to grow inside because if you don't grow inside, you're gonna have that for the rest of your life. And you're never gonna be able to deal with it. I mean, when I was your age, for God's sake, you know, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but I suspecting your 20s or, you know, I, you know, I, I was an erotic mess. Everything used to drive me crazy. And then I met Rudy and he taught me how to do what I'm talking about. And suddenly this neurotic mess called Stuart <laughs> began to feel joy and love in himself and foundation and being able to deal with all the bullshit in the world and not allow it to interfere with my spiritual life, but the very happiness that I live with every day. So have patience with yourself and don't see these external forces and things of that nature as uh, negative forces. They're not, they're teachers. It's God teaching you, hey, do your work, grow, get stronger. Get more connected with higher energy. Open your heart. Keep your heart open. And, you know, the whole thing transforms itself. Just transforms itself. We live in a different world when we learn how to do this. That's what this meditation is for. That's all it's for. This meditation is not a spiritual life. This meditation is to build a system in each and every person that attends so they can have a spiritual life. As I told you how many, a thousand times, the real guru is not Stuart. <laughs> the real guru isn't Swami this one and Yogi that one and his priest and rabbi. And the real guru is life. And we need to build a system inside that is strong enough to be able to embrace life. So don't get crazy when negative things happen. Okay, it's a reminder. I need something to remind me. Life will always remind you. It's the best reminder that you've got to grow. And don't take yourself for granted and don't assume anything and do the work inside yourself to build a system, a chakra system that is strong enough to where you can transform whatever life presents to you into your spiritual life. I mean, I hope this is clear to all of you, you know, because this is so important. And I'm very grateful that I kind of crossed, you know, it was like some great void in the last three months that suddenly made all of this stuff so clear to me and stuff that I have to pass on because it's part of the teachings that are manifesting now to all of you. Thank you. You're welcome, dear. Have patience with yourself, you know? You're doing really good. 
mean, there are always going to be stuff. I mean, look, I've said it many times. My teacher, Rudy, always talked about an oyster. You know, an oyster, you know, pearls come from oysters, but pearls come from the irritations in oysters. That's how pearls are created. Diamonds are a product of 50,000 years of the Earth's pressure. We are diamonds, all of us inside ourselves, but we need to learn to transform life's pressure into that diamond, which is inside each and every one of us. What is the diamond? It's our connection with God, an unwavering connection with higher energy in the universe. That's, you know, honestly, that's why I have these classes. I mean, I do seven of these classes a week. And then I have classes here with people that come and, and I do that because I understand over time that will transform people. That will enable me to pass on everything I've learned in my life to people, you know, that want to have a spiritual life. Now, it's not for everybody, but whoever really does it in depth, ooh, it's really a powerful force. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Um, Stuart? Yes. It, it's me painting the ass. Congratulations, Gloria. You made it through the class. <laughs> I, I just want to share uh, that uh, some, uh, I, I remember somebody asked you if the meditation helps to get uh, better when we are sick. And I want to say just it's, it helps. I get better. Yes, it helps under all circumstances. Look, Flora, I have worked with people who have had cancer. I have people who have had AIDS, people who have had all kinds of really serious illnesses. Uh, I must say, I have. there are many of them that were cured through this meditation. Some didn't make it, but most, but most of them were cured through this meditation. And people who had serious cancer. I mean, I even wrote a book about this called Leah. You know, a story of meditation and healing. And it really is such a powerful force that, we're, that it can transform even, you know, this young girl in the book had, was told by the doctor she had three weeks to live. And this is a, from a, a true experience that I went through, you know, many years ago. So yes, it works that way, but a person has to use it. You have to you have to keep coming back to it again. Build an inner life that is strong enough to transform whatever negative things happen to you into your mm -hmm. spiritual life, including illness. Mm -hmm. That's true. Look how you went through this class. You look great. <laughs> yes, you know? I can breathe because I had um, it was a hurt in my lungs and fever. Temperature. You know, you know, lie down and rest the rest of the day and take care of yourself, you know? And don't worry about it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Thank you. I will travel in um, about four days in Belgrade, Belgrade. You know, in Balkan. <laughs> I hope so. I will, will be fine until then. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I suggest getting a little rest. Yes, I do. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I hope it's clear the things I'm talking about and why even I do this meditation and what I'm trying to pass on to people that find in themselves a really profound need to have a spiritual life. Otherwise, this is too difficult. I suggest hatha yoga, I suggest, you know, all kinds of stuff you, if you don't want to go through. But this is, this is really plummeting to the depths of your being, you know, releasing things that have been buried inside for lifetimes that have been blocking one's path to God.
Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? But then just to finish, one has to do it. You have to do it. And you have to take advantage of everything involved in what it is and do it. It's two o'clock. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, if there are no more questions, there will be a meditation Tuesday. And uh, God bless you. I'm very happy to be back doing this. I took a week off, but I, I needed to do that week. It was important also. But I'm very grateful to be back and to see all of your bright faces and to see people here from all over the world doing this. And God bless you all. And thank you. Thank you for being my teacher, for God's sake. You really are. And thank bless you, you too. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.